<clears throat> Welcome to the INTJ Equation, a channel on typology and psychology from the lens of an unhealthy INTJ. I am your host, Jeff, and today I'm joined by Ben. Ben is an INTJ from the Philippines. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, tell the people a bit about yourself? Yeah, hi. Um, I'm Ben. Uh, I'm from the Philippines. I'm just recently certified as an INTJ by an by an MBTI professional, I mean, a certified MBTI professional. Um, so I think it's pretty interesting to have someone on the show from this side of the world. And um, I'm taking, you know, I'm taking master's degree in psychology right now. Oh, um, I sort of forgot everything about psychology, but sort of, because I've had issues with it, but now I am um, rekindling my passion, I guess, or curiosity about this entire thing. So I hope I learned something along the way, along with my being officially certified as an INTJ. And I guess this is an interesting personality type to begin with. And uh, I hope you'll see me more around, I guess. That's all I can say. That's not really much of an intro, but yeah whatever. I think that's a really good intro. I didn't know you were uh, yeah. uh, studying psychology. We, we recorded this podcast once before, but there was some uh, interference, so it didn't, the quality wasn't very great, so we decided to re-record it. Yeah. So did you like go back, like go f to school for a while and get your bachelor's and wait a while and go back, or what do you mean that you forgot a lot? Oh, I took, I, I got my bachelor's, um, a long, long way back um, from the year 2013. So it's been like long years. Mm -hmm. And I sort of, I was thinking, you know, that maybe the entire thing is crap and, you know, things like that. And so I never really thought about it much further. I never even like applied for an HR. I mean, to summarize, I did not think of it much further because I thought, it's um, quite a shady field to begin with, so I never um, did not, did not, I, I never pursued it any further. In, up until this year again, uh, no, last year when I decided to take it up a notch and pursue um, to be a master's degree. Very cool. What did you What do you plan on doing with it? Um. Um, well, to be a psychologist. So, but then I realized I'm not sure if I can do the one on one thing because, you know, FE is our blind spot, as they say. But yeah, um, my NI is enough to get me hooked into the curiosity of human nature and, you know, all that. So maybe I'll be, I'll be a researcher. So you don't need your uh, PhD in the Philippines to be a psychologist in the U.S. I know you have to have a PhD or a, mm -hmm. I forgot the other one, a psych D or something like that. Yeah, you have to be, you have to take the master's degree and then pass the board exam. And then that's how you become a psychologist. Oh, you don't, okay. yeah, you don't necessarily have to have a PhD, but that's another um, level of um, expertise that you could take um, when you become a certified board psychologist after taking the master's degree. Okay, very cool. I actually had a INTJ therapist. You're saying like you couldn't do one on one because of a FE trickster. Mm -hmm. Um, I I I think I think I can fake it. Well, it's too bad to say to fake it, but. I mean, I maybe I could simulate it is what I'm trying to say, but I'm more fine with more distant, um, cool approach, I think. And, you know, the, maybe a little bit more on the theoretical understanding of it and also application, of course. So maybe research. Yeah, very. Not, not, not strictly counseling per se, right? Yeah, I did see that. You know, I think I, you've interviewed an INTJ from Malaysia, and she was yeah. interning as a yeah as a psychotherapist, which it, it was it was very cool, by the way. I don't know if other YouTube channels have those type of 
interviews, by the way. So I think so I think your YouTube's cool in that sense. Uh, thank you. I definitely try to just to let a a person get on and just let them divulge about their life and their experiences and uh, whatever they want to share. Yeah, I, I, I personally had an INTJ therapist, and you know, oddly enough, she was Asian too, but. She did. She definitely did struggle with it one time, like with it, with her uh, SE and fear feeling really insecure. Like one time she just like kind of plowed over my feelings and tried to like give me like solution oriented tasks. And like the very beginning of the next session, she's like, oh, I'm so sorry and stuff like that. It's kind of funny. I'm like, I understand. She's like, you do? Like, yeah, because you're like me. Yeah, but she's kind of like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, I definitely want to jump back into your uh, pursuits in psychology, but I want to get to the cognitive functions here. Um, mm. So the first one is introverted intuition. Uh, what's introverted intuition like for you? Yeah, um, it's. Um, wait. <clears throat> yeah, uh, introverted intuition t- for me is when I'm just kind of like a tunnel vision of um no um it's for seeing implications and seeing the ripple effect of um consequences um of things it's um being able to um um see things pattern um faster than the others in kind of a narrow straight line and see how it's how it how where it's all going kind of like knowing where the stream is heading towards um where other people don't seem to care as much or having impressions of things um, which you can't explain and it's kind of hard to explain to other people and you kind of risk being seen as nutty in a way if you try to try your hardest to articulate every single thing that goes on into your mind. So that's how I would explain NI. Okay, very cool. Yeah, that's the last time. Uh, I think it was yesterday, the day before we recorded, and I really liked your metaphor of the ripple effect. I think that's a, mm-hmm. a really good way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. All right. And how about uh, extroverted thinking? Yeah, um, it I I call it my efficient efficiency function. Like it's my energizer. Um, when when I'm working with for a for a project or, um, it's something that I could rely on because it's kind of a no bullshit type of function where everything has to be efficient. Um, even with communication, like no bullshitting no bullshitting around or no beating around the bush, something like that. So um, in a nutshell, I would call it um, my energizer. Especially if I'm stuck in a NIFI loop. So like I have to think of ways to energize myself as such as like maybe a very interesting project that I could think of. So that I, I that could that could get my head out of the loop. Mm-hmm. I know, like a lot of uh, people in general, they develop the auxiliary function first. A lot of people argue with me against this, and I actually yeah. just finished reading Gifts Differing tonight, and Isabel Myers did talk about it, even though I'm not really big on MBTI. Is that mm-hmm. something that you developed like later in life? I think you said that you're 30, right? Or is that something yeah. that just really started to mature? Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. Actually, um, it's hard to say because I'm not one of those people who can go back as easily as in my childhood or whatever, and um, specifically say or state like, "Oh, I've developed TE at this um, age" and things like that. So I don't know if I'm very capable with my TE as a at such a young age. Therefore, I have developed it first or whatever. But what I will say is that. I will say that it's very possible that I'm already pretty good, at, pretty good at it. Although I'm not very aware of it, because if you are in stuck in a, if you are in a, in a, you know, in a loop, um, it's hard to see what your natural uh, function is even. So I don't, 
you know, for other INTJs, I think it will be very easy for them or very clear for them to say that I've always been using TE, if that makes sense. Whereas for others who are, who may, who is probably, who probably don't have the right environment to have that kind of natural order of the function show up, I think it may be harder to see it for themselves at first. But I have no issue with, you know, other INTJs if they say like they did not clearly see their TE at first because they were depressed or they were in a loop or, you know, I would not call that um, excuses or I think it's possible. Not just, you know, with the INTJ function stuff, with also other type. Like it's crazy, like let's say with INFP, like they could think that they would they could be ISFJ, you know, if they're stuck in an FI SI loop, like their SI could be stronger, something like that. So I don't think that's impossible that you know an INTJ would not realize their um, DE. Yeah, first. I think I think a lot of them uh, that prefer to use NIFI, they can often think that they're INFJs a lot of times because they're just more emotional than most INTJs. Uh huh. I used to think I was INFP because of that very strong FI. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And speaking of FI, how does that work for you? I also, like I also considered INFJ too. INFJ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, well, you said that you resonated with INFP a lot because of your FI. Could you elaborate on that a little bit more? Right. Um, I, I sort of went back and forth on that because, you know, my, in the dichotomies, like I am introvert, intuitive, thinking, ju judging for sure. But my T and J is like um, a, a little bit more on the borderline um, aspect of it. But I'm pretty sure I'm really T and J, like if you, wanna, if you really want to cut it. So like in the letters or in the dichotomies, I'm INTJ period. It's when, uh, when it gets to the details of the functions or the function stack and things like that. Um, I thought... I, Oh, I, maybe I could be I introvert feeling. So I thought I'm FI dominant first. And then from there, from there, let's just say I thought I was an INFP because, you know, most INFPs, especially online, they are very much, they're, they're, they make it as their outlet with their introverted feelings right there. So... And all with all the stereotypes, not with just INFPs, but also with INTJs, there's so many stereotypes with all with the INFPs, um, like this, um, I don't know, like, because when I was in high school, I went through this entire goth phase. So I thought, oh, you know, I'm a cool emo person. So I guess I, I'm an introvert feeling like I could be Kurt Cobain. So INFP, you know, <laughs> so you know, that, that kind of thing. So, okay. Yeah. That's why I thought I was an INFP, but when I compare myself with other INFPs, they seem more laid back and I get, they don't seem to get frustrated as much as I am when I, because, you know, they feel they, it gets to a point or in, to a, they, it gets to a point or a zone where, they feel happy and they feel productive when they um, when they nourish their introvert feeling. Um, but with my case, I feel like something's lacking or I get nuts when I don't plan or organize my outside world. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I find myself doing something anyways in the outside world. And then I go. I I, I keep thinking to myself. I thought I was an INFP. Why am I? Why am I? being productive compared to the others. So, you know, like that would, I would have those thoughts and I would have those inkling, like I could not be an INFP. And then I also, um, you know, in the four uh, humors um, temperament, I think I'm melancholic, choleric. Mm -hmm. And I asked in a, you know, in a forum, like how many of in an INFP, uh, when I, 
first when I still thought I was an INFP, like how many of you guys here are melancholic, choleric? And surprisingly, there's almost none. Like most of them are like, oh, I'm melancholic, phlegmatic, uh, phlegmatic, melancholic, you know, those type of combinations. I'm the only one who's melancholic, choleric. And somebody poked me and said, that's actually the mo- most common type for an INTJ. So there's just signs like that that would make me think I could not be an INFP. But the only thing that made me hold on to the INFP label is the stereotype and the introverted feeling, you know, archetype. So, but then when I got certified, somebody actually reminded me there that, you know, INTJs have introverted feeling too. So you are INTJ, but with very strong FI. So, mm-hmm. so that's it. Okay. Um, so you were in the typology when you're in high school, when you're a teenager, and now you're 30. So you're questioning your type for all those years. Um, it's kind of like an on and off thing. Okay. Like, yeah, I did not question it for like those <laughs> entire years. Um, but yeah, I was kind of like on and off about it. But yeah, sometimes I would think. <clears throat> Because I've, you know, I just associated myself with an I, with the INFP uh, label label for a long time. I thought um, I would think from time to time um, I could not, I must, I must not be an INFP because of certain signs that I would see. So, and because I've never really been officially certified, I never knew any better anyway. But it wasn't an on and off thing about typology like I did not think about typology for consistently like for years because I don't know that 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 may be unhealthy and who does that it's super theoretical yeah I think an INTJ would definitely obsess over that over years but (laughs) all right uh okay so what about your extroverted sensing is a word sensing. Uh, yeah, I'm not. That's my lowest thing. Very inferior to me. Like, I've never engaged in sports, but I've never engaged in sports. But I must say, I did want to try. But I've been planning to want to. I've been planning to try, but I could never get the hang of it. No, not get the hang of it. I could never, something will happen and it will disrupt my entire plan and it's back to zero again. And now with the pandemic, it's harder to um, actually uh, practice SE more. And um, yeah, so yeah, it comes out in weird ways though, like um, just a little bit of quirkiness that happens uh, is that my recent coffee addiction problem that caused me some sickness that now I had to stop and I'm recovering from it now. I don't know if that makes sense. So you got addicted to coffee and it caused you some health problems? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like SI demon there. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Go on to the shadow function. I, I haven't. Yeah. It tastes good. Like Oh my God, like, oh, that's my third coffee for, uh, fourth coffee, fifth coffee for the day. And, you know, somebody has to remind me. Yeah, that's bad for health. Yeah, that sounds exactly like SI demon. Is Did you just get like the buzz from the caffeine or what was it exactly? Yeah, the buzz. When you say the buzz from the caffeine, like how it just sensory tastes. Is that what you meant by that? Like, yeah, oh. I just... I kind of like I just yeah I like the the smell of the aroma the 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 taste of it I guess yeah couldn't switch to decaf or didn't have the same effect uh I, I don't know really <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah I used to drink like a ton of soda which I'm glad I quit my SI demon just drank like several two liters of Dr Pepper a day I'd probably be diabetic if I didn't quit. Then I switched to black tea and green tea with caffeine and I stopped caffeine. I noticed mm-hmm. a lot less anxiety that I had. And, mm-hmm. but yeah, we can kind of overdo it on things. 
All right. I know the shadow functions aren't uh, as well known, and we did talk about it the other day when we recorded the first time. Um, I don't know if you remember any opposing personality at all. Mm -hmm. I still have not mastered the, you know, the shadow functions that John BB's uh, eight model, but I know there's something to it. I like, uh, yeah, I like the interpretation of the demon, the last the eighth function mm -hmm. for what it's worth. Yeah, but you can walk me through it. Yeah, so extroverted intuition on Nemesis, it's kind of, we will picture all the bad scenarios that can happen, like externally. We can very be very paranoid and judgmental against people, and we think that they're going to betray us, so kind of assume the negative with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. Has that caused you any problems in your life? Or? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, um, mm -hmm. I can, yeah. But um, when does it show up for you? Like, I have a five-year-old son, and I'll lay in bed and can't sleep because I'm thinking of all the horrible things that could happen to him in the world. Um, like, I'll meet new people, and I think that they're going to stab me in the back. It's just I think a lot of it's just of my own with F.E. Trickster, which we'll talk more about in a second. It, we kind of, when we're younger, we can be really, really gullible. We can't, mm -hmm. and we can be easily fooled by people because yeah. we don't really read their expressions, their emotions, like their intent. So we get burned. So we just kind of assume that everybody's going to like stab us in the back and throw us under the bus. So it's hard to establish relationships when you have that mindset, you know? Yeah, I, c I have that mindset. Yeah. yeah, but I'm recovering from it now, but it's still there. Like I'm super, like those exact words that you said, except that I don't have a son. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, can pin, I cannot pinpoint how, it's, how, it, how it came out of me, but those exact words that you said, I could have said those things, minus the son part, because I don't have a son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. All right, so the next one is uh, T.I. Cynics. It could be yeah. like we, like introverted thinking is kind of coming up with your own concept, your own idea, your own opinion. We T users, especially high T users can be really like, well, this source said this, this source said that, but uh, the T.I. Cynics kind of, I've always like thought, like, why can't I come up with my own original idea? Like, why can I just come up with like this concept myself it seems like i just kind of have to what intjs really do is we kind of take a little bit here take a little bit there make our own system mm -hmm. yeah. and we kind of feel stupid because we can't think of our own original concepts our own ideas and we could also think that we're right about something without checking it and we'll argue it and it turns out we're dead wrong and it makes us come off stupid or at least wrong and that kind of makes us feel a little bit more insecure Mm -hmm. you ever had that occurrence in your life oh yeah almost every day <laughs> yeah maybe i shouldn't be saying that because it almost it almost sounds like i'm saying i am overcame by the shadow functions because that's all that's already like the the second shadow function from the top that i've been saying that that i am like that but you know like um with yeah with with the ne shadow function um i guess I, I guess what i'm saying is i can relate to them um especially you know if i'm i'm stable so it's pretty much consistent as um with me as far as i know all right we'll talk a little about uh fe trickster we talked about that uh just a second ago anyways uh it's about not being able to kind of pick up on people's emotions. Um, mm -hmm. We can be very insincere and cold. That's where we get our cold robotic look. A lot of people think it's uh, that we have low FI or that we have a TE preference, but it's, I think it's really FE trickster that we just don't emote emotions very much. And we're accused of being, you know, looking like serial killers and things like that. Oh yeah. And I got like called I, like that too. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, when we're younger, we can believe almost anything because we really don't know like what people, their intentions are. We can't sense that like most people do. Has that ever been an issue for you? 
uh, you're saying you're like that when you're younger? Very, very gullible. I would trust anybody in anything. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, me as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it, with other INTJs because maybe I don't know if because there's so many stereotypes going on around. Like some of some of them might even say, "Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not gullible. I'm so smart. Like even when I'm a child, I have my own world. Blah blah blah." I don't know if. those are like real INTJs or a particular set of INTJs. Uh, I'm not even sure if that's exactly what they meant. Maybe I'm just exaggerating in my mind. But some of the INTJ stereotypes, is, it makes me sick. Yeah. <laughs> But I, re I relate to your description so far, though. So. Yeah, I think that's one reason why I wanted to start this channel. Like, there's a lot of negative stereotypes of INTJs, but there's also that we're these awesome, superhuman, super self-confident people. But when that's not always the case, we're sometimes very broken and damaged people who are very insecure and have no mm -hmm. self-esteem. So I kind of want yeah. to show it from a more negative, dark lens, I think. Yeah. But, um, like, uh, I would... challenge that a little bit though like i would not would you really say that you don't like you have zero self-esteem because i would say at least we are more self-contained compared to other types like we know what our strengths we know what our weaknesses you know we're no we sort of know where we're going compared to the others you know what i mean so it's not like we we have zero self-esteem I don't know if I'm making sense. Like we, we, yeah. I, I get what you're go, going for, but in my case, I had zero self-esteem. My, my parents are like pretty narcissistic and borderline. And they pretty much destroyed me from the inside out and took any self-confidence I ever would have basically. And it took me years to build any of it. And I'm doing a lot better now these days, but yeah, I mean, I, would it do or try anything all right so we talked a little about si demon it could I'm sorry be to hear that i'm sorry i said i'm sorry to hear that oh that's that's fine i mean things happen for a reason and well, mm -hmm. hopefully if you can move past them and learn from it if not you know some people don't okay yeah I want to move on to SI Demon. We talked about it a little bit, like your coffee addiction was kind of like, oh, I know this is bad for me, but I'm keep doing it anyways, because I don't know, mm -hmm. like for me, it was food or it is food still. I still struggle with overeating. Mm -hmm. I get stressed out and have that sensory uh, sensation that I have to have to kind of cope with my stress and my problems, I guess. Uh, like I mentioned before, I used to be like a giant soda addict and I probably would have be really diabetic by now. If I didn't cut it out, uh, we could over abuse like sex and drugs or alcohol. Um, any other problems you had besides your caffeine? It could also be like, you'll like cut yourself or hurt yourself and you don't know it. Like for almost my whole life, I never had a sleep pattern. And now I took a night job and I don't have a sleep pattern anymore. <laughs> sleep schedule. So yeah, it's kind of things that we do to ourselves and it can cause some major health issues. Any issues with that besides the coffee? I get so frustrated with sensory distractions. Yeah. Like, I just want to, like, like, I don't know, like, I swear to God, I'm going to kick somebody, you know, type of frustration if I don't get this entire room quiet, like, if I want to think about something. So... Yeah, I know what you mean. I used to work at this place growing medical marijuana and all day, every day, they would blare rap music with these giant boom box and it would just drive me nuts. <laughs> my, my theory behind that is because we just are in our NI so much. It's like this, for me, it's like a guiding voice and like a picture and we need that quiet and stillness to kind of communicate with this, whatever's in us. And that mm -hmm. just drowned it out basically. And it made me pretty pissy and ragey. Yeah, I've always like really hated like like huge loud noises like with bars and disco clubs and things like that. Like I've had a friend, um, I she's she was an ESFP, 
Um, so like I went with her with all the, with all of her nightlife thingy. So um, because you know I got curious um, with that kind of scene that I was never in, and so to improve my SE a bit and to understand where it's coming from because that's not really me. Mm. And so I sort of get it now, but like dear God, like my mental battery like would be drained like i don't know like it's super fast that it gets drained like that but um i guess i i mean i stayed longer with her for her because you know she was a a friend um during that time but even when at times i didn't really i didn't really want to um, anyway, it, it was quite um, complicated, but I mean, you know, yeah, we parted. We parted ways. I parted her. So, anyways, because I w- it, it was all because of the utility of knowing the what is going on in that scene, and maybe also use it to my advantage, because it's always good to have connections, I guess. Yeah. I, I went through a similar stage in life, but mine was more like I didn't know who I didn't learn the typology, what typology was till my late twenties, really. So I always mm-hmm. went through life kind of like, why can't I be normal? Why can't I enjoy these sort of things? So I mean, for a long time, I had like an ISTP friend, ESTP friend, ISFP, and an INTP, and I would try to go out in bars and stuff, but I would just overload and have to you know, tap out basically. It was, it was kind of funny. My INTP friend tried to become like this SC guy with SC, his SC trickster. And he would try to be like this. He thought he was like this ladies man and stuff. He looked like, I don't know if you know, Rosie O'Donnell. He had this big ponytail. <laughs> it looked just like Rosie O'Donnell. That was, that was quite entertaining actually. <laughs> uh, did you feel good doing that or? For me? I mean that INTP friend of yours, because he had you said right, INTP has SE trickster and he was acting that way. So did he feel good when he was doing that? Because that would like the equivalent of us doing FE, our trickster, right? Mm-hmm. And so would he feel good doing that? Because if he was doing it, did because it it sounds like he was doing it on it on purpose. Well, I, I think it kind of helped him get out of his shell. It, it helped him develop his FE tr- uh, inferior. I don't think it really helped him develop his SE trickster, mm-hmm. but maybe got over some insecurities. But, you know, I kept mm-hmm. like, I could see like the life this is going to bring, like, you know, drinking is bad for you, drinking and driving, you know, you could go to jail or you could kill somebody, you could kill somebody else and stuff like that. And I think as he got older, he realized that and it became like a stage in his life. But, you know, like the ESTP guy I was talking about, he still does that sort of thing and he's almost 40. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, you know, there's a time and place for it in your life, but I mean, you know, once you get a little older, you should probably stop doing that as often, at least, you know, doing it with moderation is okay. But, but yeah, he's, he's doing pretty well for himself. Last I talked to him now and he's not quite like that. I see. I get exhausted. Um, I get exhausted with FE2, by the way. So SE yeah. or FE. But I mean, like, SE is the fourth and FE is the eighth. So, I no, 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 no. FE is not the eighth. It's the, when, um, what's, or, what's it, what is its order again? That's the trickster. That's the trickster the seventh. Is the seventh function. Uh, right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I get exhausted that's our blind spot right yeah it's called Mm -hmm. trickster blind blind spot polar that's uh several Mm -hmm. different things i just go by the john Mm -hmm. db lingo maybe um not exhausted is the right word with fe but like i just i don't know like something about something about it especially too much of it or something about it like makes me like whoa like do I trust you? You know, that kind of thing. Like, I'm appalled by it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm not nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe SE is, makes, is the one that makes me exhausted, but FE is the one that gives me that kind of reaction. So maybe yeah. they're, not ex- they're not literally the same thing, maybe. 
No, I think FB would be more like people like, oh, hi, how are you doing? Why don't you smile very much? What's wrong with you? Are you okay? Do you, can, do you want yeah. something? Can I, can I help you with something? And SE is like, hey, you want to drink this beer and listen to this loud music and do the whatever, you know? <laughs> I think it's, oh, yeah. It's yeah. both like that, comedy and trying to make you feel good, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know you talked about we talked about this in the last time we recorded uh that the Philippines is pretty FE heavy and you said that's kind of rubs you the wrong way. Mm, yeah. It kind of rubs me the wrong way. But I mean, mm-hmm. we're known to be the nation being um uh, very hospitable and you know all that stuff. So I don't really want to take that away <laughs> by claiming that as very bad but i mean you know personal perspective wise um i will say um in, yeah i mean um just you know like for example we celebrate far way too earlier than far way too, far way too earlier compared to the other nations around the world that were super crazy about christmas and we're very excited and enthusiastic about um, generally a good extroverted feelings. You know, there's there's, there, there's definitely um, a lot of good points to that, and you know, I don't, I'm not going to take that away. And I'm, of course, I'm proud to be a Filipino, but um, with my function stack, um, I sometimes i feel like it's too much because like people here are kind of like um oh you're not joining that um season festival you must be a sucker or i don't know like sometimes there's an exaggeration in how people interpret your actions or um how in you know or how they interpret your fi so there's lots of like cultural, seasonal festivals and politeness and smiling and warm greetings or FE greetings. Mm-hmm. So all that kind of stuff. The Asian um, hospitality, you know, mm-hmm. um, that kind of stuff. So I'm not sure if it's like that with other Asian cultures, but you know, it's in the Philippines, it's like big time. Like, especially if there's a foreigner around, like people here tend to smile more. No, oh, yeah, they probably depend on tourism a lot too, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I could see that. So I know you said that you celebrate Christmas. Oh, they start celebrating christmas here like september <laughs> it's crazy like they'll start selling christmas stuff at stores and it's like oh already. yeah 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 all right uh some things you wanted to talk about is uh the difference between intj in the u.s and intj in the philippines so i never been to the philippines so it sounds kind of similar to the u.s i guess very tradition based si traditions uh really se like overindulge overspend be reckless be impulsive is that encouraged over there like spend 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 buy 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 oh yeah yeah it's um yeah the people here are very extravagant um we have really 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 we have really big malls um, maybe our malls are even bigger compared to others. I'm not sure, but Filipinos love buying stuff for themselves, for other people. Um, I don't even buy stuff that much, but I'm not, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying that to put them down or just to compare and contrast. So um, I guess... In my own perspective, um, the difference between the U.S. and the Philippines um, with INTJs and, you know, with and culture, I mean, generally speaking in culture, um, I will say that um, uh, 
I guess, you know, I think the INTJs there will be more exposed to like technology, um, more progressive thinking. Um, in here, there is more of a like, um, I bet the I bet I bet I teachers are the ones here who are like the first atheists or something, you know. But yeah. I mean, yeah. But I mean, they're still exposed to like um, traditions. I mean, traditions and stuff. So it will it will take them more time to kind of get out of it in a way. So I guess that's how I would um differentiate the the INTJs from the uh, Philippines from the US and maybe the ones here are more dramatic maybe a bit more dramatic I don't know I don't uh, take this with a grain of salt because I'm not very sure about this but because uh, Filipinos are also uh, they're known to they're encouraged to sort of express their emotions and feelings like you could see this on television shows and even like men that. Um. Uh, th- that one is quite complicated. Not so much with men, but in a general sense, as a culture, like there is a um, spirit of like do this for your family because you love. Yeah, um, you you have to show that you love them. You know that ge- kind of general concept. Mm-hmm. So. That's actually probably not a bad thing for INTJs. Here, men are, you know, if you express yourself, you're basically a pussy. But, you know, a woman, if you kind of think for yourself, you're a not feminazi sort of thing. And I think that's one key stage that INTJs develop in is just opening yourself up and being more vulnerable to people. And that's how you kind of establish relationships, uh, something that I've been trying to do more. But it's it's a struggle for sure. So you kind of are a little encouraged to do that over there? Well, if it's, you know, in an, in an F.E. way, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It kind of loses its sincerity at times, at least in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think yeah. we do see F.E. is pretty fake. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and you also want to talk about how you relate to INTJ profile slash stereotypes in general. So what are some... uh? stereotypes you have in mind yeah we've touched this um like a minute ago but mm-hmm. uh, okay okay to add to that um i think people forget that we have ni as our dominant and it can be very playful sometimes but not like very whimsical playful to the point that you know, to the point of being disorganized like, like theoretically it's, playful it, yeah exactly like it's very very interesting up here right and mm-hmm. people just don't get it they just see the te and so i don't know like we start getting labels like oh you must be a sociopath or a psychopath or i don't like your humor or you know but it's super interesting here like we're not we're not if they just know how, you know, how interesting NI is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, yeah, what else? What stereotype um, that we're cold or that we're not, I mean, we can look cold, but I mean, FI is we have FI, so it's, it's it's definitely going to be this. I mean, going to vary with display with different INTJs, but with FI as one of our, I mean, top three in the function stack, we're not that cold, as people will would like to make it out to be based on those stereotypes. It's just some choose to show it and some. No, 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 no. Okay, let's just let's just do, let's just end it end it there. Like, yeah, we're not that cold. Yeah, and I think that's really 
like I, I mentioned earlier, like a lot of people think it's because we have TE auxiliary, TE parent, or that mm -hmm. we have low FI, but I really think it's just FE trickster, FE polar, whatever you want to call it. We just don't emit those emotions. We don't bring it out into yeah. the world. They're very internalized. So we just don't share yeah. it. We don't show it. Exactly. But we can be very, very sensitive. And a lot of people don't mm -hmm. realize that, I think. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I just want to kind of draw this to an end. Uh, questions I ask everybody. Do you have a favorite type? I can't remember what you said last time. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I don't have a favorite type yet, as far as I know. I think, um, yeah, I don't have a favorite type yet. What about a least? Um, I'm, yeah, well, FE dominant types. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think they can be good. I really, really like ESFJs. I've only met a few ENFJs and I don't have anything against any type. It's very individualistic, but they can be very, very intense, it seems like. It's funny because um, an ENFJ um, colleague uh, started chatting with me. Um, this was like a year ago. And she was like, oh, oh, are you an INTJ? I think she saw me, my type or whatever that is. And anyway, long story short, uh, I got annoyed and I blocked her. So <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're sorry. If you're watching this, sorry, but. <laughs> whatever you probably would will not watch this <laughs> the si demon door slam <laughs> all right as an intj what would you like others to know about you um DJ, um yeah um i think yeah i i, I don't think i will fit the intj stereotype that perhaps most people know. Um, yeah, I guess that's uh, that's all I could say about that. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to know about another type in particular, or something about INTJs that you're unaware of or questioning? Um, okay. Um, I'd like to know. Nothing actually, nothing, nothing comes to mind. Fair enough. Well, I think that's all the questions I have for you. Is there anything you'd like to talk about before you go? Uh, nothing. So yeah, I thank you. And your YouTube is very refreshing. It's so simple. Uh, you invite interesting guests, I think. Um, so yeah, it's refreshing compared to the others with much fluff, but I'm not putting them down. I get, um, just to clarify that, just this one's refreshing and like an alternative to all the YouTube craziness out there. Like it's been very crazy lately with all this MBTI, YouTube, yeah. um, things going on. It's almost yeah. like, I mean, I could, I, I could just see where this is going. <laughs> like getting oversaturated? yeah and almost like yeah yeah or yeah yeah it could go to the direction of like if you know alice in borderland and or alice in borderland the netflix series like they call you know like that place there they call the beach where it's kind of like became this weird party crazy cult thing i don't know maybe just watch it to see what i'm talking about Okay. That's the bad version of it, like that I could see where this is heading. That's like being convoluted and people are just yeah making shit up basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I get that. A lot of like this person's mistype because I want to get more views on my channel, so I'm gonna blast this person just to like that one uh, video you sent me on the one YouTuber I won't mention, but all right, I'll yeah, yeah. we took the time to record this um anything else i don't mean to cut you off there um no 
nothing else and all right well the I think the second time around the quality was much better and you're less distracted with uh the outside noise i know that could be very very hard for intjs like uh -huh. i can i'd be in the same boat as you if that were me <laughs> So yeah. if you like this content, please like, share, subscribe. If you're an INTJ or you know an INTJ and you resonate with anything that we said, leave a comment below. I think if you're going beyond a clickbait. And also, I forgot to mention this in front of the podcast, but I am now on most major podcasting platforms such as Spotify, Google. I'm still waiting on Apple, I think. They take forever today, but I'll get on there eventually. I don't have everything uploaded, but maybe like six, seven podcasts. It's a very long, tedious process, so I'll get there. But anyways, thank you for going beyond a clickbait. Have a great day.